Hello everyone, my name is Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an ASUS TUF A14, the FA401 model. I'm gonna take you on a teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to get inside, how to access and upgrade some of the internal components. So for starters, power down your computer through the start menu, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. Then we're gonna flip the computer over to access your bottom case screws. This computer has 11 screws in the bottom case and the screw down here in the corner near the blue arrow, that screw does not actually come out of the bottom case. When you unscrew it, it just pushes up a little bit on the bottom case, but it stays inside. So this is where you would start prying it off with your pry tool. You'll go nice and slow around the edges. Don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Just keep it on the edge, go nice and slow but firm, and you'll be able to get that bottom case off. If you get stuck going in one direction and you can't seem to pry it up anymore, leave it alone, go to the other side and continue in the other direction. After you get your bottom case up, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging anything in your computer when you're working on it. If you would like any help with tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any upgrade or replacement parts for this specific model, the FA401, I will have a link above, also below in the description, and it will be a list of all those tools, supplies, and replacement parts. Before touching anything in a computer, it's always wise to remove or at least unplug your battery. Computers are safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through them. Your battery is right down here along the bottom of my screen. This is a 73 watt hour battery, 15.48 volts. And the model number for this ASUS battery is C41N2302. I will have that information below in the description if you need it, but I will also have a replacement battery in that link I told you about with all of the parts, tools, and supplies for this computer. It's held in by these four screws near the red arrows and it's plugged into the motherboard right here near the blue arrow. Now to get this plug out, there's a metal bar on top that you would gently slide up toward the top of the computer, and then you'll be able to pop this clip off. As a side note, if you're here because your computer is not turning on, your battery could be bad and you may need to replace it, but keep in mind that laptop should still turn on and work even with a bad battery, as long as the power adapter is plugged in. So if your computer is not turning on at all, there may be something else wrong than just a bad battery. If you would like help troubleshooting that situation, I will have a video link above. Also below in the description, it'll be the full troubleshooting process I use in my computer shop when a laptop's not turning on so I can find the cause and how to fix it. You have two different storage locations. You have one here on the right side of my screen and one here on the left underneath these black guards. You can just gently, carefully peel them up so you don't damage them, but they're just held on by double-sided tape, so you can peel those off. After you do, you reveal the two M.2 ports. This one on the right, for most of you, will be empty. You'll see the port right here and the screw here that holds your solid-state drive down. And as you can see, there's no screw in the middle, so this only will accommodate the 2280-sized solid-state drives. The other port here on the left is the one where most of you will have a solid state drive in. Again, it's held in by a single screw there, and then this solid state drive will release. This computer can handle up to Gen 4 solid state drives. Again, the 2280 size. I will have all the solid state drive spec information below in the description if you need it, but I will also have some upgrade and replacement options below in that link I told you about with all of the replacement parts and tools for this computer. After removing this solid state drive, you'll notice it's wrapped in aluminum foil and there's a thermal pad inside of it. So if you are replacing this drive, make sure to put that thermal pad on the new one and wrap it again in, in this thermal foil. Below in that list, I will have a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. If you're looking to add one to this port or if you're looking to replace this one at a low cost, but I will also have a one terabyte solid state drive for a little larger upgrade. 
As a side note, if you are installing a new drive to your computer, you most likely will have to install an operating system to it. I will have a video link below in the description. It will be a tutorial showing you how to install Windows 11 to an ASUS computer. And as an additional side note, if you are replacing a bad drive, but there's some data on it that you would like to recover, keep in mind that it is usually possible to recover data even from a bad drive. I will have more information about that below in the description as well. Now, as far as your RAM, your RAM is right here. However, it is not replaceable or upgradable. Uh, it's soldered onto the motherboard, so there's pretty much nothing we can do with it. It's up to 32 gigabytes, depending on your model, that you will have of RAM. Uh, I will have the RAM specs below in the description as well if you need that. But again, there's not so much upgrade that we can do with RAM anymore these days with computers like this. We have one speaker here toward the right of my screen and then one speaker here toward the left. This left-hand speaker does not plug into the motherboard itself. Its wires come down here. You'll see these wires that go down all the way across, up through this threading, and then join up with these wires from the right speaker, and they plug into the motherboard right here. Now keep in mind these wires from the speakers are very fragile. Try not to pull on them if you're unplugging this or if you're unrunning these wires. Try not to pull on the wires if at all possible, just manipulate that plug. So use your fingernails or a pry tool on either side of that plug to get it out of that port. Also, these speakers are not actually screwed down. If you'll notice these yellow rubber washers over the posts for sound insulation, that's all that's holding the speakers down. So you can easily just wiggle those up nice and careful to get those out of your computer. I will try to have some speaker replacements, although they can be hard to find for this model, but I will try to have them in that link I told you about below in the description with all of the replacement and upgrade parts for this model computer. One good thing to shout out is if you are having sound issues in your computer, if your sound is not consistent across different platforms, it may not be a speaker issue, it may be a system driver issue. I will have a video link below in the description, also above in the video, and that will show you how to make sure all your system and your drivers are updated so you can rule that out before attempting an invasive speaker repair like this. Your Wi-Fi card is right here to the right of my screen. It's partially obstructed by this black guard here. That's only held on by double-sided tape, so be careful, but you can peel that right off to gain better access to your Wi-Fi card. After you do, the Wi-Fi card is held down by a single screw here. After removing that screw, you'll be able to pull it out of this port right here. Then all you have left are these antenna wire. Those are just snaps, so you can pull those directly up and off and unsnap them from the Wi-Fi card. To get them back on, they do need to be at a perfect 90 degree angle to snap back on, and you are strong enough to damage them if they're not at the right angle and you try to force it. So just go slow, be patient. It could be a pain in the butt if you're not used to it, but you will be able to snap those back on. I will have the Wi-Fi card spec information below in the description if you're looking for a replacement, but I will also have a Wi-Fi card replacement option below in that link I told you about with all of the upgrade and replacement parts for this model computer. As a side note, if you are having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you cannot see any Wi-Fi options and you can't access those, most likely that's not an issue with the card. That's an issue with your system or your drivers. Above and below in the description, I will have a video tutorial link showing you how to remedy that situation and make sure your system drivers are updated so you can rule that out before coming in here to do an invasive Wi-Fi card repair. As far as your fans, you have two fans on either side of my screen, up top. They're held in by three screws each. And the left fan plugs into the motherboard here. The right fan plugs into the motherboard here. Now be very careful for these wires. They're probably one of the most fragile wires you have in a laptop computer. Definitely just pull and push on that plug. Do not pull on the wires to get that fan out. Also, if you notice up here near the CPU area and the GPU area, there's a small warranty void sticker here. You'll see these in various places on computers you work on. What happens is when you damage that sticker, it'll void part or all of your warranty. So be very careful when operating around those stickers. Consult your warranty for exactly how it's affected, but just a little shout out word of caution there with things like that. 
After taking up those eight screws, you'll be able to take your heat sink off and your heat spreaders. Just so you guys are aware, I don't know why you're here if you're here to replace one or both of these components or if you're here just to clean out your computer. If you would like help cleaning out your fans, cleaning out your heat sinks and putting on new thermal paste, I will have a video tutorial link above. Also below in the description, it'll be a video tutorial showing you how to fix an overheating laptop. And one of the things it will show is how to clean out your fans. Sometimes you can even take them apart to really clean them out well. But it will also show how to clean off the old thermal paste from both your heat sink and your CPU GPU. You don't want to put new paste on top of old paste. And it will also show you how to apply the correct amount of new thermal paste. If you put too little thermal paste down, as you may guess, it won't get heat out very well. And if you put down too much thermal paste, it ends up locking heat in rather than facilitating its transport out. So again, that video tutorial will be below in the description if you would like it. As a word of caution about these ribbon cables, you'll see some large ones like this, some small ones like these in your computers. Be very careful when operating these ribbon cables. The connectors are very fragile. These black clips that hold the ribbon cable in place, if you break those clips, you're probably not going to be able to find a replacement which means the ribbon cable will never secure down very well again. So be very careful when operating those. The way you would do it, if you want to un unclip it to remove your ribbon cable, take a small, very, very flat pry tool up from this direction, insert it under the black clip, and gently pop it up. It'll open like a book cover. It'll open from this side, and the hinges are on the top side. And again, be very careful when operating that. Uh, that's a majority of your internal components in this computer, the A14, FA401, and a couple things you can upgrade. Hope this video was helpful. I look forward to seeing you on my next one.